From what it is to what it might be like to live there, join me as we explore the loneliest planet. How is life on rogue planets? I know what you're thinking. Wait, what is a rogue planet? Out there somewhere in the universe are planets that are both just like all the others in the universe and yet are infinitely different. These are known as rogue planets, and they're called that for a very simple reason. It's because these planets, for whatever reason, were born into the universe without being tied to a star. Confused? I'll explain. If you believe in the Big Bang version of the creation of the universe, then you believe that when the explosion of matter happened, it flung everything out into the universe at large, and is still even expanding to this day. Galaxies formed via gravitational forces via the stars and planets that were made, yet the force apparently kicked out many planets, and now they're roaming the universe at large. There's even speculation that a rogue planet is just outside of our solar system. The idea of other planets being just outside our realm is rather enticing, but it's also scary, because a new planet suddenly appearing could throw our solar system into chaos, and if it's going fast enough as it hurtles through space, it could even crash into another planet, maybe even Earth. There are some scientists who believe that the Earth has already collided with a rogue planet, and it was this collision that created the moon that we see above us, showing that even in great destruction there can be wonderful creation. Now the question you should be asking is, well how do we know that these rogue planets exist? A very sound question given our more rooted place in the universe, as well as how we are able to look at the stars and galaxies around us. Basically, we noticed some oddities as we looked at the stars themselves. In 2011, a study was published by a scientist from Osaka University. They looked at over 50 million stars and noted over 170 anomalies that didn't make sense at first. Objects that were bending a light in a way that most objects don't. As they looked deeper, they realized that the majority of these objects were bending lights from stars or other objects, making them stand out from the crowd, if you will. But 10 of these objects were revealed to be not anywhere close to any stars. What's more, they were as large as planets and sometimes even as large as certain types of stars. It was here that we truly found rogue planets and realized that they were moving through space at great speeds despite not having a tether to a parent star. So how do they move then? Well, not unlike virtually every object in the Milky Way galaxy, they are tethered loosely by the galaxy itself, which has a gravity field that keeps the stars and planets in line so that they'll go with the flow of the galaxy, if you will, while not shooting out into other galaxies or deep space. The problem with rogue planets, though, is that because they don't have a closer tether to orbit around, like the Earth does with the Sun, it's only loosely guided by the pull of the gravity itself, and thus hurdles around unknown reaches of space. In many ways, a rogue planet is the loneliest planet in the universe. Not because it may not have life on it, which we'll get to in a bit, but because unlike virtually every other planet in the known universe, it doesn't get the light of a sun to show off its beauty or get the warmth of the star to help make it more than what it is. And because it's a rogue planet, based on our knowledge of planets and their relationships to their stars, Scientists believe that the whole entity is cold, frozen, and dark. Now we noted a little bit earlier that these rogue planets were kicked out of their systems and that they're going through space at a good clip. But how fast are they going exactly? Well, we honestly don't know because it's really hard to find and track these planets. However, we can do some comparisons based on a certain other thing we know can go rogue, a star. That's right, stars have gone rogue in the past and we've been able to track them when they go throughout space without a tether, and they can reach speeds of up to 1.5 million miles per hour. So does that mean a rogue planet can go that fast? Sure, it could, but more than likely it goes a lot faster. Why is that? Do recall that stars and planets have many similar sizes at times, but that doesn't mean that they have the same mass. A star always has more mass than a planet, and so since rogue planets are smaller than stars and have less mass, that means that it takes less time and effort to move through space. So knowing this fact based on basic physics, scientists have calculated that rogue planets could barrel through space at a rate of 10 to 30 million miles per hour. 
On the high side, that would mean that these rogue planets are traveling about 5% the speed of light, and many, many times greater than anything that Earth can fling into space, even with our best technology. Could you imagine if one of these rogue planets just randomly barreled into our universe? It's very likely that we wouldn't be able to do anything but watch as it approaches and potentially wrecks everything. Because even though the distance between Earth and Pluto is 3.2 billion miles away, depending on the size and speed of the planet, there's nothing we could do to deter or block its path. After all, we can barely do anything to block a large asteroid, let alone a planet. On that grim note, let me ask you a question. How many rogue planets do you believe are out there in the Milky Way galaxy? We know or knew of at least 10 via the survey from 2011. But how many do you think are out there in the stars? The truth is that we have no clue and that's just as scary. Scientists are actually debating the numbers and they have a very large range. Some scientists think that this is a somewhat rare phenomenon and that though a planet may start out as a rogue planet, they'll eventually end up by a star that is able to grab it in its gravity pull. Others, though, think that not only is this not a rare thing, but they feel that there could potentially be more rogue planets in the Milky Way galaxy than there are stars in it. For the record, it's estimated that the Milky Way, as of 2019, has about 200 to 400 billion stars. So if there are as many or more rogue planets, that's a lot of mass flying around in space untethered. But how can there be so many rogue planets? Well, not unlike the formation of other planets, it all has to do with the art of creation. Before we dive into what makes these rogue planets, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any of our weekly videos. As you hopefully know, there are two distinct types of planets in the universe, solid and gaseous. Earth is a good example of a solid planet, and Jupiter is an example of a gas planet. These planets formed via millions of years of gravity, compression, and certain other things that led them to being the planets we know now. And rogue planets formed very much the same way. After all, when the Big Bang happened, clouds of gases were poured all over space. And it's believed that the gravity of the galaxy sometimes formed these small gas giants into planets without them being tied to another star. To be clear, they are planets and not stars despite forming in similar ways. These planets are even referred to as sub-brown dwarfs, a reference to brown dwarf stars, the smallest kinds of stars that technically aren't stars themselves, despite acting like them at times. But with sub-brown dwarfs, they don't even show the kind of things that make them act like stars, so they just drift through space as a ball of gas. As for the solid or rocky rogue planets, they have a different path to becoming adrift. You see, these rogue planets were very much like Earth or Mars or even Pluto, still a planet. They were once locked in with a star, but then somehow, some way, they were kicked out of their system and became a rogue planet. I know that may sound like something from science fiction, but it's not as rare as you might think. First off, in the earliest days of the solar system, it's possible that these stars and planets didn't have the stability that many systems have now shifting gravities, orbits that put one another closer than they should, and more could have forced one planet to be kicked out. The other option is that a collision or invasion of something into the system shook things up in a way that could have allowed a planet or two to be kicked out. Not unlike what could happen to, say, Pluto if a large rogue planet got caught in our sun's gravity at the outer edges of the system. Finally, a paradigm shift in the status quo of a system could have expelled some outer planets as it happened, like if a star suddenly went supernova. Its shockwave could have been strong enough to blast a planet out of its orbit without destroying it. There are many ways this could have happened, but the results remain the same. The rogue planet was born. All right, so let's get to the elephant in the room. The question that virtually everyone asks about planets in general, but now you want to know if it's even possible in these circumstances. Mainly, is there even a chance that there is life on a rogue planet? In short, the answer is yes. There is a chance that life could be on a rogue planet, especially if it came from a situation where it was part of a solar system for a period of time before being ejected into the unknowns of space. After all, many believe that there is life out there. It just needs the right conditions. So taking random chance and probability into account, 
It's entirely plausible that life indeed exists on a rogue planet, for time at least. Think about our Earth for a second. The reason we're able to exist is due in large part to our Sun. The Sun that provides us warmth, gives us light and so much more. A rogue planet wouldn't have that at all. In fact, the only light and warmth that it would get would be from the galactic core, which obviously wouldn't be much. Based on estimates, the average temperature for a rogue planet drifting through galactic space would be about minus 270 degrees Celsius, which would mean that it would be unbearably cold. All surface life would likely die. If there are oceans, they would be frozen solid. The surface itself would be frozen almost to its core. It would need something like a hydrogen-rich atmosphere if it were to last for a very long time without a sun, and even then, it would have limits. Plus, if the worst-case scenario were to happen and the planet were to go into intergalactic space, the literal space between galaxies, the heat would plummet to just a few degrees above absolute zero, and the light would literally be nothing. So how could anything survive on such a world without light or heat? Well, you're thinking about this as if aliens or human beings were on these planets and are still on them now. Not unlike our own world, though you need to think smaller at times. In this case, we're talking about oceans. If a rogue planet had oceans and those oceans were deep enough, they could have something very similar to what we have on Earth, hydrothermal vents. Basically, these vents are entities that sprout out of the Earth itself and into the oceans to dump out heat from the core of the planet. We have these on our planet in several forms, and there is indeed microscopic life that do a variation of photosynthesis because of these vents and their heat. But wait, you say. I thought you said that most rogue planets would have frozen oceans. And I did. But like I said, if the oceans were deep enough, like our own oceans, the freezing would only go down a certain depth. Our own ocean goes over 36,000 feet in terms of depth. That's more than Mount Everest. So if our world was suddenly to go into the deep freeze, the ocean surface and immediate layers would freeze over, but not the deepest depths where these vents are done, or at least they wouldn't at first. Because of the potential life that these vents could give and the time needed for evolution to take place, it's possible that certain rogue planets are filled with various forms of oceanic life that is more than fine in the cold temperatures of the water, not unlike how there are creatures living in the Mariana Trench despite its intense pressure, and how if you bring one of those creatures up to the surface, it'll die because it wasn't ready for that shift in its lifestyle. Granted, not all life lasts forever, and it's possible that the planet would eventually become uninhabitable for even the most resilient of deep-sea species. But the point here is, it's possible. And since rogue planets do fly through the universe, it's technically possible that a planet with life may have flown by us, and we've never even noticed. Thanks for watching, everyone. What do you think about these rogue planets and the lives that they live? Do you think we'll ever get to see a rogue planet near our own solar system? What do you think about the possibility of one of them having life on it? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.